Coming up on UB Football Insider, we'll take you into a wild locker room celebration following the Bulls' big win over Florida Atlantic. We'll preview today's MAC opener against Kent State. We'll go on an island getaway. It's UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold, and it starts right now. They're going to go for it on fourth and three with 3.15 to go in the game from their own 16. Game might be on the line right here. Driscoll settles in. Shotgun snap. Draw play. Handoff. Singletary stopped. I believe he was stopped short of a first down. And it's really, really close. He's getting a good spot here. Here's the spot. It is short. The Bulls have held with 2.38 to go in the game. Drew Anderson looking at a blitz, shotgun snap, he's going to throw, hangs it up, fade, end zone, Anthony Johnson, bullseye, it's a Buffalo touchdown! Welcome to the show, Drew Anderson. What a throw by Drew Anderson facing a ton of heat, a great catch at the other end. Big play for Buffalo at the end of this game. Final knee for Drew Anderson. 13 seconds, 10 seconds. The Bulls pour onto the field. They're gonna celebrate one huge victory at UB Stadium. Second win in a row, a two and two record to start the season. Second straight win over Florida Atlantic and an incredible amount of momentum going into the start of the MAC play next week at Kent State. one to pull out here. Next man up. Oh. Fighting to the end. You got Drew. Drew Anderson's a guy that's had a had a, a, a great spring. He he had a fine, also a very solid uh, fall camp. You know, he's waited patiently. He doesn't say a word. He doesn't get rattled. But I, I saw a young man who came in and did an excellent job uh, um, executing our offense. <clears throat> but also, if you really watch at the end, he he was managing the clock in the huddle. He managed the clock at the line of scrimmage with the cadence to work the clock. He did a lot of things that really helped us win tonight. I mean, it's hard. Um, like you said, you, you don't really go into the game expecting necessarily to play because um, that means probably something not very good happened. Um, but you just got to prepare like you're going to play um, every week and kind of, I guess, trick yourself into thinking you are going to be out there. And um, I mean, the defense and the, the running game, the O-line, made it, you know, they made it pretty easy for me. I mean, like we're at practice, he's running with the ones all day, every day. So it's like the connection is already there. Like he practices with us every day, so it's like it's not nothing new to us. Like he came, man. It's like, oh, we just gonna get, we just gonna stick to the routine and we're gonna make big plays. Bulls linebacker Khalil Hodge, 16 tackles for him. And did you say anything to your teammates at halftime? I mean, that's an incredibly emotional moment to see your quarterback get hurt like of course, that. Of course, I just told him, you know, it's next man up. That's the mentality we've had all year. It's the mentality because Lionel preaches in the locker room every day, and we need to go out there, continue to compete, and continue to go fight for a win. First and ten for the Owls. Read option, handoff Devin Singletary, running wide to the left. Khalil Hodge slows him down, and then Tatum Slack takes him out. That's exactly the answer that you want from your defense to come out in the second half after a demoralizing end of the first half. Drew Anderson gets the snap, hands to Theo Anderson, up the middle, fighting, bullseye, it's a UB touchdown. Theo Anderson, in the red zone, takes it in to give Buffalo the lead in the second half. The air was sucked out of the stadium, Scott. It could have affected the team, but they found it in themselves in the halftime locker room to come out and rally behind their new QB. A potentially demoralizing injury, not just losing a star player, but a star player that was dominating the game in the first half. He had almost 150 yards passing, two touchdowns on the ground, was in the middle of leading another scoring drive just before the half. But Buffalo was able to rally. Maybe it worked out for them that it happened just before halftime. They were able to go in, regroup. They came out, they played emotionally, they played hard. And we're able to get the win for their injured comrade. 
Hey, we all we got. We all we need. Sir. All we got. We all we need. Fellas, that's a hell of an effort. Uh -huh. Be proud of yourselves. Congratulations. All for one on two. One, two. All for one. Coach, very impressive on the vertical leap there in the post-game <laughs> locker room celebration. That was very well done. Well, I'm from a town of 8,000 people. I think I might have got the phone book on it. but uh, <laughs> So, yeah. But it was fun. Our guys have worked extremely hard. And to have that type of success and that type of victory, to, for them to have a chance to enjoy it was, was really special. There were so many elements of the win over Florida Atlantic, both on the field and off the field. The emotion of it, um, seeing the starting quarterback get hurt, having a kid that had never played come in. Let's start there. Drew Anderson off the bench, like every backup quarterback has to do to be ready he was ready. Tell us, as you look back on it, how impressive that was. It was. It was a really impressive performance. I think Jim Zabrowski, who's done a great job with our quarterbacks and keeping Drew ready um, to go, you know, made a good point after the game about, unfortunately, with Tyree getting hurt, but to get Drew in before the half ended and then I'm kind of settle into it and then cover some things with them I think really helped us a little bit but you know Drew Drew showed a lot of people and our fans about really what Drew's been doing since last spring in our program that's been playing good football a lot of your players talked about that the halftime that you know that a, a lot of teams could have just sort of packed it in seeing their star quarterback go down and get hurt um, what was it that went on at halftime what did you and your coaching staff and your veteran players do to get those guys refocused to come out and play well right off the bat in the third quarter honestly the same thing we do every halftime you went in we, we looked at the plays that we thought drew would be the best to handle went out and we talked about it but i think within their themselves as coaches were talking and meeting they're talking about you know that they had to dig down a little bit more do you know protect for drew and give him some time so he could see things players and receive you know receivers running backs talk about stepping up and making plays and it was really neat the way to see the locker room the way they rallied so you finished 2-2 two and two in the non-conference part of the schedule. I uh, arguably could have been 4-0 and oh if a few things go your way in some very close games. But to have that momentum going into this very natural split in the schedule, non-conference to conference, how much does that help the remaining part of the schedule to have some of the momentum that you do now? Oh, I think it helps a lot. I think every every day and especially every Monday, Paul, when we walk in to, to have our team meeting after after you know a Saturday game, you can see the confidence that and and belief in one another that this team continues to build and and they're seeing it pay off for them everything that they're paying the price of. But now we're right back at starting over again with conference play and and it's going to be important to play well today. And yes, that's later today. The MAC opener for the Bulls on the road at Kent State, a 3:30 start. We we will dive deeper into the golden flashes. We'll get the breakdown from Coach when we return on UB Football Insider presented by ECMC. The Bulls return to UB Stadium on Saturday, October 7th in a matchup versus defending MAC champion Western Michigan presented by Town BMW. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m., but the excitement starts three hours prior right inside Stampede Square with family fun entertainment and a concert by the alternative rock band Better Than Ezra. It's the annual homecoming game, so wear the blue and white and cheer on your Bulls to victory. For tickets and more information, call 877-UB-THERE or visit ubbulls.com. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Seth Q, changing lives every day. Welcome back to UB Football Insider, presented by ECMC. My name is Paul Peck with Bulls head coach Lance Leipold. Today, on the road for the Bulls at Kent State, a 3.30 kickoff at Dick Stadium. You can see it on ESPN3, and you can hear it on ESPN 1520. Our pregame radio show begins at 2.30. Well, the Golden Flashes are 1-3, coach. They have played a monstrously difficult schedule. Uh, games against Clemson, Louisville, and Marshall are the three losses. So how do you get a feel for who they are as a team when you're you're popping on tape of them playing the national champions. Well, like you said, that's a pretty difficult road to, to kind of go. And all those games were on the road for them as well, not not just the opponents. So when you play the defending national champs, you know, first game out, 
and then the Heisman Trophy winner. That that that's that, that's a tough slate, but it's a good football team, and you can see some of the things that they're doing. Um, they, they're excellent on defense. Last year they came in here and, and took it to us at, at UB Stadium, and we you know right off the first series that we never got on track. So that's got our players' attention. We respect this club, and it's going to be important to play well today. Yeah, they always play very good defense through the Kent State Golden Flashes, as Coach mentioned. That's a given. Particularly, maybe the player playing their best defense is cornerback Demetrius Monday. He has four interceptions in the first four games. That leads the country. Earlier this year at Mac Media Day, we had a chance to get some thoughts on the outstanding cornerback from Kent State head coach Paul Haynes. He's a coachable player. Um, I think he takes in everything that you sit there and you say. He's a student of the game. He studies the game, you know, and, and he works on his skill, you know, every single day. So I think at that position, when you're out there on the island and, and you're being challenged, he has the confidence that he needs. He has great footwork, great instincts, and great fundamentals. Monday is an outstanding player, maybe one of the better cornerbacks in the Mid-American Conference. I know he made some big plays against your team last year. How do you plan for a guy like that? Yeah, he's a very talented player. Like you said, leading the nation in interceptions. We have to be aware. I'm, I'm sure they're going to put him in good matchup situations to try to slow us down, and we just have to be aware of it. But at the same time, we have to execute what we do. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, – it, it's one of those things that's going to be a great matchup, especially if he's on an Anthony Johnson or something like that. Yeah, um, speaking of their – uh, Kent State in their offense, they've struggled. Maybe that has as much to do with the schedule that they've played as anything, but they're also potentially starting their third different quarterback of the year. The quarterback that played so well against your team last year here, Nick Holly, is out for the season with a knee injury. They may go with a freshman by the name of Dustin Crum. What elements of challenge does that add to you? Yeah, they've they've rotated three quarterbacks. You, you mentioned Nick getting hurt, and uh, he's a very talented player. Um, you know, George Bullis was another one that we had seen a couple years ago, so it'll be interesting. You, you still see what they want to do. They want to incorporate some some option-type schemes with it. They'll, they'll play with three backs in the black backfield out of the pistol formation, and they do a lot of things schematically that uh, there's a little bit of Army flavor. There's a little bit of Colgate stuff in there, but they, they have a they have probably more speed than both those teams on the outside that they incorporate fly sweeps, reverses, and a lot of things that's going to force us to be very sound in what we're doing. You get a sense from your team that the intensity rises a little bit now that they know it's go time with the max schedule? Absolutely. They're excited. And like you said, they're they're feeling good about, you know, coming away with these last two wins, but they know it's a, it's a whole nother ball game now starting Mac play. And yes, the Bulls will go for three wins in a row later today against Kent State. And if they're able to get it, one of the reasons why will be the leadership on and off the field of senior wide receiver Jamar Island. Jamar Island, number 15, senior wide receiver for University at Buffalo. 6.07 left to go in the game. Shotgun snap. It is a fake handoff. Quick throw, end zone, touchdown, Buffalo! Diving to make the grab for the Bulls is Jamaral Island. My main goal was to always be into the game, always know that my time could come anytime. So, you know, Marcus McGill went down and, you know, we were in the red zone and they called a shot to me, so I had to make the play. That was pretty memorable. It was, it was uh, important to do that in front of a lot of my family, which uh, we, would, we were at Bowling Green, which is pretty close to home for me. That's probably my favorite moment so far, other than, you know, playing with Khalil Mack and Bo Oliver and all those guys and, you know, going to a bowl game. I said, it is the nature of a man! Yeah. Yeah. The greatness! Yeah. Yeah, I found out that I had a voice when you know a lot of guys came up to me and they said they appreciated what I had to say and everything. So I just decided that, okay, well, if I have a voice, then I might as well use it. And I kind of fell into that leadership role. My mom and dad, both uh, the way they raised me, they've always told me to speak up and you know voice my opinion and things like that. So, I mean, just being around them and growing up and being raised by them has you know, kind of put me where I am right now. Uh, my pop father played running back at Grand Valley. He, was, uh, he had a very successful career at Grand Valley, actually in the Hall of Fame there at Grand Valley. Um, I used to watch his uh, his highlight film a lot back when I was like a little kid. So I remember coming in and I remember how Fred Lee and Alex Deuce, how they, you know, brought me in and made me feel comfortable and, you know, really worked on my craft a lot as a freshman. Looking up to those guys has led me to, you know, maybe look out for the guys that are coming in this year and some of the younger guys who continue to develop. When you get voted captain, they're saying that we want you to we see you as a leader for us. We want you to be a leader for our team. We, we know with you kind of in the front of us, that's going to help all of us. I mean, that's, those are earned, right? Those aren't given. He brings toughness to our group. He brings real 
savvy for being a route runner and experience and, and uh, really good hands and, and uh, is a polished receiver. I would like to get on, uh, maybe be an athletic director one day. I've had talks with Alan Green and I've worked with him a little bit, so just continuing to do that has it's been pretty interesting. I've always had a passion for sports and just being around the sports and whatever I can do to help you know, other players and other students get an opportunity to have the great experience like I've had would be ideal for me. The Bulls return to UB Stadium on Saturday, October 7th in a matchup versus defending MAC champion Western Michigan, presented by Town BMW. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m., but the excitement starts three hours prior right inside Stampede Square with family fun entertainment and a concert by the alternative rock band Better Than Ezra. It's the annual homecoming game, so wear the blue and white and cheer on your Bulls to victory. For tickets and more information, call 877-UB-THERE or visit ubbulls.com. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. Bulls wide receivers coach Rob Ionello is also the team's recruiting coordinator, which means he spends more time in cars than any of the other assistant coaches. He might want to keep the one he got to drive in today's Coaches in Cars segment. Let's head to Town BMW. <laughs> My name is Tom, I'm one of the geniuses here at Tom BMW. I'm Rob, so it's good to meet a genius. Always good. So today we're gonna to be taking out the 7 Series. Not just any 7 Series, the 740E. Is car fast? Is the car I coach the receivers, I like fast. Well, this is a BMW, of course it's fast. Starting off, how comfy is your seat? This is comfortable. Super comfortable. And it fits to you, it form fits It you. kind of form fits you. Now I always said, if, if I could buy this seat and just plant it right in my living room. I would do that. So the first thing that we added that, that was a really cool feature was uh, gesture control. Just kind of rotate your finger. Which direction? Either way, we'll go this way first, because that's going to actually turn the volume up. Oh, that's cool. If you point two fingers at it. Two fingers? Yep. That's going to change the next station. Oh, wow. So I'm going to show you adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control. So what this is, is it's basically going to drive itself. Oh, wow. Press the top right button. Right here. Right there. So don't touch the brake. It's going to mimic what his car actually okay. does. It has a radar that's shooting against his car. OK. Don't touch it. But if he doesn't touch don't the touch brake, it. then I'll hit it. I'm not touching. And it's, it's going to come to a full. Come, you sure? I'm Are positive. you sure? Are you I'm positive? positive? That's incredible. That's something. Isn't that's that amazing. something? That's it comes amazing. to a full stop all by itself. Wow. It's time now for the top five plays of the week. Brought to you by ECMC, the difference between healthcare and true care. Number five. They're gonna go for it on fourth and three. Game might be on the line right here. Driscoll settles in, shotgun snap, draw play, handoff, Singletary stopped. I believe he was stopped short of a first down. Here's the spot, it is short. The Bulls have held with 2.38 to go in the game. Number four. Buffalo has six men in the box. They're probably going to look to throw. Driscoll will throw in the pocket. Rushed, hit, and sacked. Malcolm Kuntz with his first career sack. Kuntz with just a big old rush off the outside is able to get to Driscoll. Huge play here for Buffalo. Number three. And again, right to the line come the Owls. Shotgun snap, fake the handoff, par to throw. Throws deep down the far sideline, intercepted! It is picked off by Ryan Williamson. Jumped in front of the wide receiver, and the Bulls have their first turnover of the game. Parr tries to go deep in the slot yet again and misreads the defense. He thought that that was gonna be man on man. It turned into zone defense, and Williamson goes over the top to make that play. Great job from his safety position. Number two. Backup quarterback Drew Anderson in the shotgun. Gets the snap, hands to Theo Anderson, up the middle, fighting, bullseye, it's a UB touchdown. Theo Anderson 
in the red zone, takes it in to give Buffalo the lead in the second half. First career touchdown for the red shirt freshman, Theo Anderson from seven yards out. Number one. Four receivers, Reed in the backfield. Drew Anderson looking at a blitz, shotgun snap, he's gonna throw, hangs it up, fade, end zone, Anthony Johnson, bullseye, it's a Buffalo touchdown! Welcome to the show, Drew Anderson. What a throw by Drew Anderson facing a ton of heat, a great catch at the other end. Big play for Buffalo at the end of this game. For nearly 100 years, ECMC has brought hope and healing to Western New York. I'm living proof and I couldn't be more grateful. By cancer, we all hope trauma will never happen to us. But when it does, we can rely on ECMC to always be there. I hope you join me to be there for them and help them build their new state-of-the-art trauma center and emergency department. Visit supportecmctrauma.org to help learn how you can support life-saving care. This is UB Football Insider, presented by ECMC, the difference between healthcare and true care. Welcome back to UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold. My name is Paul Peck outside the Murchie Family Football Center here at UB Stadium. The play of the defense in the second half was a big reason why the Bulls defeated Florida Atlantic. So let's take a look at our Karuba collisions, including one player who had the right stuff. Here are this week's Karuba Collisions. Here's Mitchison's kickoff. It'll be fielded two yards deep by Kirith White. He's going to bring it out near side hash marks to the 10 to the 15. Oh, he gets drilled. Gaddafi Wright welcomes Kirith White to Buffalo with a big hit that keeps the ball inside the 20 yard line. Read option, handoff Devin Singletary running wide to the left. Khalil Hot slows him down, and then Tatum Slack takes him out. That's exactly the answer that you want from your defense to come out in the second half after a demoralizing end of the first half. To come out and lay a big hit out there, make an early statement. Driscoll in the shotgun snap, read option, handoff Singletary stuffed! Stuffed by the defensive line, Robertson, Hodge grabbed him and pushed him back. Check out the Bulls on social media and choose your favorite Karuba Collision of the Week. Well, thanks for watching this edition of UB Football Insider. The Bulls on the road later today, Mid-American Conference opener at Kent State. It's a 3.30 kickoff on ESPN3. You can hear it on the radio on ESPN 1520. Our pregame show starts at 2.30. We'll see you next Saturday on UB Football Insider.